Join Michael Voris this April as he goes down under to Australia for the Charity with Clarity Tour. Michael will be speaking in Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Canberra, and Wagga Wagga. For all the details, just go to the link. The cost of abuse is in the billions. We'll have the latest figures. A new prayer campaign has started, but from an unlikely source. And a Catholic college president is spouting an opinion that's a bit of a drag. Those stories and more just ahead on Catholic News Roundup. Catholic News Roundup is brought to you in part by PewSitter.com, your online Catholic newspaper for the third millennium. CatholicMediaCoalition.org, in line with the church, online with the world. And TheAmericanCatholic.com, politics and culture from a Catholic perspective. Hello and welcome to today's edition of Catholic News Roundup. I'm Matthew McAuliffe. The cost of abuse. Sexual abuse scandals have cost the church billions of dollars over the past seven years, and we have the latest published numbers on the issue. Almost two and a half billion dollars have been spent on sexual scandals in the Catholic Church since 2004, with 57 percent of those funds allotted to settlements, while the rest went to things like attorney's fees and therapy for abuse victims, among other costs. It is interesting to note that last year, 21 minors alleged they were abused by a priest or a deacon, while 683 adults alleged they had been abused in the past. As the latest information says, 68% of allegations, quote, occurred or began between 1960 and 1984. Perverted pro-abortion prayer. The success of the 40 Days for Life campaign sweeping across America has pro-abortion activists retaliating by coming up with a nemesis project. An interfaith group called Clergy for Choice is joining forces with Six Rivers Planned Parenthood in California for the campaign called 40 Days of Prayer, Supporting Women Everywhere, to be offered up in support of what pro-death supporters call abortion rights. Daily invocations during the movement will be for women to whom, quote, pregnancy is not good news on day one, consistent with intentions of this kind, also giving thanks for abortion escorts who, quote, guide women through the hostile gauntlets of protesters. The pro-life program 40 Days for Life has seen 21 abortion clinics shut down so far in different places across the U.S. after its recent campaign also saving the lives of 668 babies that campaign organizers know of for sure. Pro-life rights reinforced. Images of, pro of aborted babies at pro-life demonstrations are protected by the First Amendment, confirmed by the Supreme Court of Wyoming's recently closed case on the issue. In a 3-2 decision, the panel ruled that Jackson, Wyoming city officials, stifled the rights of pro-life demonstrators by issuing a temporary restraining order limiting their protest during a Boy Scout festival. The ruling says, quote, the fact that the messages conveyed by those communications may be offensive to their recipients does not deprive them of constitutional protection, end quote. You can read more of the ruling on our resource page by clicking on the link right outside the screen. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a few seconds. Catholic News Roundup is brought to you in part by NewOxfordReview.org, the voice of Catholic Orthodoxy, in print and on the web. And RenewAmerica.com, expanding the influence of America's grassroots in the cause of freedom. Here come the shock troops. The church militant is getting younger and more educated, according to one study on the newest members of religious orders over the past year. The study was conducted by Georgetown's Center for Applied Research in the Apostolate, and reports that those who professed perpetual vows in 2011 first considered their vocation at age 19, while half of them contemplated it as young as 17. Sixty percent of the class of 2011 have undergraduate degrees, while 16 percent of them have earned graduate degrees as well. The current average age of those living the religious life are 39 for women and 42 for men. Rainbow indoctrination. One Catholic college president is claiming that her university's scheduled drag show is not inconsistent with the school's Catholic identity. University of San Diego president Mary Lyons wrote a letter to the board of trustees for the college 
saying the drag show and the accompanying lectures surrounding the event are meant to, quote, foster students' understanding of and empathy for the complexities of gender nonconformity, end quote. She also named three other Catholic colleges hosting drag shows in her defense, Santa Clara, DePaul, and the University of Seattle. Last month, when Catholic Rick Santorum was a GOP nominee candidate, he stirred controversy by calling United States colleges indoctrination mills. And now, with some Catholic universities allowing heretical speakers across the country, it seems that they are following suit. I'm Matthew McAuliffe. Thanks for tuning in today. Be sure and tune in tomorrow for your daily dose of Catholic News Roundup right here on RealCatholicTV.com. Also be sure to check out The Vortex, where Michael talks about two major problems with communication in the church today. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to tell all your friends about us. And as always, God bless you. If you think The Vortex helps you get things in focus, try becoming a premium member on RealCatholicTV.com for the best shows on earth. The benefits are out of this world.